Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the sixth video in the AVR series with explained mini development board from Microchip, and today we will continue with where we left in the previous one. We will continue with the I2C Master Series, and connect and control an actual slave device to the I2C bus. I am going to use the PCF8574 as the slave device, which will receive the data from the MCU, and will control some LEDs in the output. Let's check the datasheet of the device. This is basically a 8-bit IO expander for the I2C bus. We will only cover the important details in this datasheet. It supports the standard I2C communication with 100 kHz frequency. Here is the block diagram of the device. It has the three input pins A0 to A2, which can be used to modify the address of the device. We have the clock and data pins which will connect to the respective pins on the MCU. There are eight outputs available on this device, where we will connect the LEDs to. Here is the address of the device. The 7-bit slave address has the four fixed bits, and the bits A0 to A2 can be modified to modify the slave address. Here you can see the 7-bit address for different bits. The PCF module has all three bits connected to the VDD by default, so the default address is 27 hex. Here is the connection of the module to the MCU. The PCF8574 module is generally used to connect to the LCD, and therefore changes the pin requirement from 16 pins to only 2 pins. As I mentioned, the pins A0 to A2 are connected to the VDD by default, and beside them is the connection to the ground. The address can be modified by connecting the respective to the ground. Here you can see the output pins P0, P1 and P2. We do not have access to the pin P3. Then we have the pins P4 to P7. I have connected the LEDs to all the pins, which then connects to a common ground with 100 ohms resistance. The data and clock pins are connected to the pin PA1 and PA2 respectively. For the device to work properly, both the pins must be pulled up to the VCC with 4.7 kilo ohms resistance. The module is powered with 5 volts from the MCU. We will continue with the previous project. Last time we commented out the part where the master waits for the acknowledgement from the slave device. Since we have an actual slave device this time, let's include it now. Also this statement was wrong, as we need to check for the RX acknowledgement bit. So the master sends the slave address to the bus. When the address matches with a slave device, it sends an acknowledgement response. On receiving the acknowledgement, the master continues to send data. Once all the data is transmitted, the master sends the stop condition and returns zero. If the slave does not acknowledge the address, the master sends the stop condition and returns 1. Let's write the main file now. We need to control the LEDs connected to the pins, shown in this connection diagram. To turn the LED on, we will simply write a 1 to the respective pin. Let's define an array to store the data for the LEDs. These bytes will set the respective pin high in the output of the slave device. We have the byte for the P0, P1, P2, P4, P5, P6, and P7. The I2C is initialized in the main function. In the while loop we will send one byte at a time, so let's send the data in the for loop. The slave address is 27 hex, and we will send one byte of the array at a time. Let's build the code now. There are no errors. So let's put a breakpoint to this statement and debug the project. We have hit the breakpoint. You can check the LEDs connected to the module, 
Right now all the LEDs are off. Let's run the debugger now. We hit the breakpoint again, and the first LED is on. Now the second LED is turned on. All the LEDs are turning on, one at a time. Let's remove the breakpoint and let the code run freely. You can see the LEDs are turning on after a delay of one second. Let me change the delay to 100 milliseconds, and run the code. You can see the result of 100 milliseconds delay. We will also see the output on the logic analyzer, so let me change back the delay to 1 second, and flash the code again. The data is being transmitted every 1 second. Let's check one of these frames. Here the master sends the start condition, and then the address 27 hex with the right bit. The slave acknowledges the address, and we can see the ACK response on the bus. The master then sends the data 10 hex, and the slave acknowledges the data received. Then the master sends the stop condition. After one second, the master again sends the start, followed by the slave address, and a new data to write. So our I2C master is working fine so far. I will continue with it, and in the next video, we will see how to interface the LCD display via the I2C. After that we will also write the functions to receive the data from the device. This is it for this video. I hope you understood how to communicate to a slave device using the I2C. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.